Hello and welcome to another 1am recording session where it's the only time where I can record because reasons. Today's topic is Pokemon Masters, but before I talk about Pokemon Masters, I'm gonna talk about some other stuff, so if you're just interested in me talking about Pokemon Masters, you can skip to this time code right now. So, at this current point in time, I finished editing all of the Explaining Jojo to Walston series. That should be in a neat playlist somewhere around here or over there. You guys can go check it out if you want to. It took me a really long time because my laptop is really slow. Whenever it would pause or play the video in the, in the editing software, there would be a 50% chance of the software freezing. So I had to wait like a couple seconds, like 10 to 15 seconds, for the software to unfreeze. And mind you, this is not really heavy editing. I am just cutting the video down, removing all of the dead space, removing all of the ums and uhs and stutters. And despite me doing very minimal editing, it still took me about a week to edit the Explaining Part 6 video, while for Part 1 until Part 5, it took me two weeks. I am planning to get a new laptop soon, although I'm not sure when. This may be next year, two years, six months, who knows, honestly. So let's just roll some dice and hopefully I get lucky and I can buy a new laptop. As for right now, I just want to talk about Pokemon Masters. Now if you guys don't know, Pokemon Masters is a Pokemon gacha game. I played it when it first launched like a couple years ago, but after I played for about two weeks, I kind of stopped playing because there wasn't really much content in the game. I'm pretty sure the story was only until chapter 13, if I'm not mistaken. And the newest thing that I remember was that you could summon for Blue who had a Mega Pidgeot. And I didn't really care about Blue, honestly. Not a lot of things interested me, so I just stopped playing. And the reason why I started playing again was because I saw my brother playing Pokemon Masters, and then he quit after two days. But when I saw him playing, I was like, man, I remember playing that game a long time ago. I want to replay it again. And so I did. And I played for about a month or so. And now I have stopped. When I first started playing, Leer was out. If you don't know who Leer is, Leer is a Pokemon Master exclusive trainer who is the king of Passio, which is the setting of the game. It is an artificial island where Pokemon are able to perform sync moves, which is a really powerful move when you guys have deep bonds or something. Since Pokemon Masters is a gacha game, they need to have a lot of ongoing events and a lot of uh, summons that you can do so you can waste more money to get the characters you want or to get good characters for the event. But honestly, the events are mostly just grinding. You don't even need good characters, which in the long run doesn't really matter because sometimes the events last from two weeks to a month. So you have plenty of time to get all the required items that you might want. But the reason I'm making this video specifically is because I want to talk about the end event. There's an event where you are able to get a free 4 star character who is Getsis. If you don't know, Getsis is the true leader of Team Plasma. If you guys played a little bit of Pokemon Black or White, you might think that Ed is the leader, but he's actually just a puppet leader who is being controlled by Getsis. This event story starts with Brendan and Norman, who is the Generation 3 male main character, and Norman, who is supposed to be their dad. They are fighting another pair of trainers. I don't remember who these trainers are. Basically, this whole battle shows that even though Silver has a legendary Pokemon, because of the bond between father and son, they were able to rival that of a legendary Pokemon, which shows how familial bonds can help make you guys stronger. After we see Brendan and Norman fight Silver and some other guy, we cut to Getsis. Getsis has been magically teleported to the island of Passio. The first thing that Getsis does is to see Ed, and he tells Ed, Look, son, I know I haven't been a good father. You were basically the puppet leader and I raised you to be the face of my evil organization because I wanted to gather support. But now that you have a legendary Pokemon, I have a legendary Pokemon, we're on this artificial island where everyone's just supposed to be happy and do battles, let's try to fix our relationship. And N feels very conflicted about this because on one hand, he really loves Getsis because Getsis was his dad for a majority of his life, for over seven years, I believe. But on the other hand, from the events of Pokemon Black and White, it's very clear that Getsis doesn't treat Anne as human. Getsis just manipulates and deceives Anne and only sees him as a tool and a means to an end. Anne obviously feels very conflicted, and he just tells Getsis, I need to think about this first. I don't really know what to say, you just kind of showed up. We thought you went missing, we thought you went into hiding, you're just suddenly here. I can't process all of this right now, I'll talk to you later. And Getsis says, okay, I'll be staying at this cave. 
I guess instead of a normal accommodation, I know he's a prisoner, but this is Passio. I think he could forgive war crimes. But he decides to stay in this cave. And then the next cut is that we see Getsis and Giovanni teaming up because Getsis is still evil. Who could have guessed? And Giovanni is also evil. So they're teaming up to hatch some sort of nefarious plan. And if you guys didn't play Pokemon Masters, there's an evil organization kind of on Pokemon Masters, which is called Team Break. Team Break just wants to steal all the Pokemon. Because who gives a fuck? It's a gacha game. We don't need to think about really deep storylines here. So essentially, Giovanni and Getsis manages to control a significant portion of Team Break. Like maybe, let's say, like 20 to 30% of their members decide to work under Giovanni and Getsis. And their base of operations is essentially the cave where Getsis told N where he was staying at. So N talks to Nate, who are besties, I guess? Also, I find it really funny that Nate is canonically very short. Anyway, Nate talks to N, and eventually N comes to the realization that he does want to have a normal relationship with his father, but because of the horrible things he did, he just wants to take it slow. He doesn't want to jump right into things. So he decides to go see Getsis in the cave. Now that we're in the cave, N, Nate Silver, and some other people I forgot about confront Getsis, and N says, what I just told you guys, where he wants to have a slow relationship with his father because he can't forgive everything that Getsis has done because it was very emotionally traumatizing and emotionally scarring. And Getsis basically says, You fool! You activated my trap card! I can't believe you would actually come to this cave. I never saw you as a son. You were a monster. I only took you in so you could be the face of my organization. My evil organization. And I only dragged you out here because of Kurum. You have a Reshiram, and I want Kurum and Reshiram to combine so I can have the ultimate legendary Pokemon. And to help me is Giovanni, the leader of Team Rocket. I never loved you. Yeah, that, those are some really hurtful words. When I was reading through the event, I was really shocked that the story took this route. I mean, I didn't expect that Getsis was a good guy, but at the same time, I didn't think they would be like this... Uh, evil? <laughs> I thought he would have some redeeming qualities, but no, he's just a total asshole, a terrible father, and a terrible human being. But whoop de whoop, Giovanni decides to betray Getsis and decides to steal Kurum for himself. Cuz N truly does love Pokemon. He says, you know what? You have Kurum. This guy is obviously smarter and more evil than you. I can't let him have Kurum. I'd rather you, Getsis, my evil adoptive father who only saw me as a tool, I'd rather you have Kurum instead of Giovanni. And so, N, Getsis, and Nate all team up to fight Giovanni. Even though they don't defeat Giovanni, they manage to escape. Kurum is still in Getsis' possession. And after they run out of the cave, N says, Clearly, you are still evil. But, if you're willing to self-reflect, if you're willing to change for the good, I believe that if we take small steps, we truly can be father and son again. And then Getsis basically says the exact same thing again. You fool! I was only using you to escape from Giovanni! I never saw you as my son! Not even a person! You're just a monster who I never loved! And then Getsis just leaves. He just runs off with Kiram. And N is just at a loss of words. He doesn't really know what to say. He's tried to convince Getsis, and Getsis just slaps him in the face essentially. He just throws it all away because he's truly irredeemable. Mind you, Nate is still here. Nate witnessed this whole thing. He witnessed when Getsis said it once, and then he witnessed when Getsis said it again. And then Nate just starts crying, saying, And you just wanted a normal family. You just wanted a relationship with your father. Why can't you even have that? And N basically just responds, It's okay. It's happened once before. I've gotten used to the pain. But at least I have you now, who is my best friend. And as as like a player, you're reading this like, holy shit! Like, what's happening? Like, honestly, I I'm also at a loss for words for this. I didn't expect them to be this deep with it, I suppose. When I saw Nate cry, I also felt incredibly sad. I felt a tear rolling down my face. A single tear. But it's okay, those are manly tears. And when Nate and N were talking to each other after Getsis said those horrible things the second time, emotion started playing. And emotion was basically a black and white 
music OST. As the name implies, it's very emotional and it plays during the emotional climaxes of the story in Pokemon Black and White and then they played it again here. And man, when that music started playing, ah, another tear came out of my eye. And I guess that's essentially what I wanted to talk about in this video. That event story is really, really sad. And I think it shows that even though it's just a gacha game, it doesn't mean that the people working behind the game don't care about it at all. They do try to provide some quality content. I truly appreciate their effort to portray a really emotional story from the original games, which was not really present. That was really cool. Now that I've talked about the end story, I'd like to talk about a few other things. I got Lear. Which is awesome. He's a five star. I love him. He is so funny. He's voiced by Bryce Pappenbrook, incredible voice actor. And then I also got both of his retainers. I have Sawyer, funny guy. I got Rachel, best girl. Sorry, second best girl. Best girl is Skyla, who is voiced by Laura Stahl. If you guys don't know who Laura Stahl is, Laura Stahl voices both Barbara and Sin Yan. And I love Sin Yan. I'm a Sin Yan simp. Sin Yan Nation, rise up. Love Sin Yan to death. Found out she voices Skyla, decides to use her in every single team comp, unless it's very disadvantageous to me. I love Rachel. Rachel is second best girl. I love her so much. She's really funny. I love her voice actors. Her voice lines are really great. And I got her maxed out 5 out of 5. And Sawyer is also 5 out of 5. Lear is 3 out of 5. And then I got Signa Suit Blue. I didn't think I would like Blue, but Blue is actually a pretty funny guy. And Blastoise is pretty good, honestly best decision I've ever made in my life. I tried to get the special anniversary 2021 Lily. Spent all my diamonds, couldn't get her, and that's why I quit the game essentially. That's all I have to say. If you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like, comment, oh hold on, I have one more Pokemon. Like, comment, or even subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.